What's going on, everybody? Jacob here, Miami Dolphins Syndicate. Everybody knows now that the Dolphins are interested in bringing in Dalvin Cook after he was released from the Minnesota Vikings. So at the very least, that means the Dolphins are interested in bringing in another running back. I am okay with the Dolphins running it with A-Chain, Moster, and Wilson as the running back trio. However, at the very least, it looks like the Dolphins are interested in bringing somebody else in. So if it doesn't end up being Dalvin Cook, who I do think it's a pretty good possibility he does end up signing with the Dolphins, but as time continues to go on, it looks like he's exploring more and more of his possibilities, and it's no longer as much of a guarantee as I thought it was once he was released that Dalvin would be joining the Dolphins. So with all that being said, these are the top five running backs that I could see the Dolphins going and getting if Dalvin Cook is not the guy uh, who ends up in Miami. Uh, starting off number one with the, the backup in recent years to Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt is, of the list, probably the, the, the best running back. Just, you know, I mean, I have him at once. Uh, that sounds obvious, but he's very versatile. He, he's not what he was when he was with Kansas City, had a 1,300-yard season there. Last year, 468 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, average just below three yards a carry. He's very versatile in, in the sense that he could also do a good job in the passing game. Again, last year was not a great year for him. Only 210 yards in the receiving game as well, so struggled on both ends. But there was definitely a disgruntled relationship with him and the, the Cleveland Browns as he wanted to be moved earlier on in the season, and they did not let that happen. And once that kind of got out there, we saw his role diminish in that offense. So he is out there in free agent, and I am pretty much all but certain that he would not be going back to the Cleveland Browns. I think he steps in and would be the, the best best running back we have on the roster. Moster is very versatile as well. Moster is more of a speed guy, whereas he can make you move, make make moves, make you miss in space, not just on the basis of speed. He's also very decent between the tackles. Uh, I do think he, he's a very solid do-it-all running back, and... You know, if you're asking me in terms of, like, he still has a pretty high value if you're playing fantasy football. He still has a relatively high, just, when you think of him, you think of a somewhat high value uh, going into the season for fantasy football. I don't like him per se for fantasy football, which I know Donovan is going to immediately go to text me about as soon as he sees this list. I, I don't think he has a great value in terms of that, but I think he does have a role to play still in the NFL. I think he still has a couple of good years left, and if it's not Dalvin Cook, I'd be very okay with uh, Kareem Hunt being the, the Dolphins running back going into next season, followed by uh, Leonard Fournette. And a very similar story that we just told about Kareem Hunt. Uh, you know, As his career has gone on, he has become a less effective runner, and last year was arguably his worst year except for his first year in, in Tampa Bay. Uh, only 668 yards, three touchdowns, only three and a half yards of carry. But you do get that added value of having help in the passing game, which... I value a lot from the running back position. What can you do besides just being handed off the ball? 523 yards in the passing game. So a total of over or just about 1,200 yards total from scrimmage last year. So that, that 668 yards looks bad on paper from the ground game, but you're getting so much more from Leonard Fournette, as well as you compound the fact that the, the Buccaneers offensive line was atrocious last year. Not that the Dolphins' offensive line is much better, but I believe he can come in position and, very similar to Kareem Hunt, compete for that RB1 position. Those are the only two guys, other than Dalvin Cook, that I think are out there that can come in and actually compete to be the number one running back on this team. He can he can catch the ball. He's good on the goal line. Uh, he has gotten a little bit less effective as years have gone on. However, coming over in a new system with a lot of other weapons that will give him more opportunities to be open, both in the passing game and the, the defense has to respect the passing game so much that somebody, we're, this offense is praying for somebody to break forward as a workhorse running back and really just keep the defense honest. And I think you can have that with Mr. Leonard Fournette. Those are the only two guys, like I said, that I think can come in and immediately be the RB1. The best out of the potential RB2s or wherever they end up in this offense would be, I think, Darrell Henderson. Now, he has not had the stats to back up what I've seen from him. Now I've had him, I will admit, I've had him on my fantasy team quite a few years uh, as, as somebody who, every now and then, will give you a really good game followed by a lot of stinkers. So I don't think he's going to be in a position where he's going to carry anybody's offense or even carry anybody's backfield. But if you bring him in as one of multiple options, I like him. 
Now he, he's at six, his his all time high in terms of his his four seasons in the NFL. That's also one thing. He is the youngest guy uh, available of of the good quality options. Uh, he is the youngest one. He's only has has four years of NFL experience, so he still has got a lot in the tank. His best season is only 688 yards uh, with five touchdowns. A little bit less versatile in the passing game. He's only got a, a best of that same season with 688 on the ground, 176 throughout the air. Has 13 total touchdowns on the ground in his career, so doesn't have a lot of the numbers to back it up. But what I do like is he still has that youth. He still has a. He's going to have a strong motor, whereas with Leonard Fournette. Kareem Hunt, and the next guy you'll get to on this list, which you guys will see and understand, they have some miles on them. They, they've been the, the league now for six, seven, eight years, and especially for a running back, we've seen the years pile on to running backs quickly. And guys who you thought were amongst the best in the game, out of the league for the age of 30. You don't have to worry that here with, with Darrell Henderson. Uh, as far as I can remember, he doesn't have a lot of injury issues. And I think it'd be a good option for uh, that's a third of the of the top five best guys left. That next guy that I was talking to, who definitely has got some some experience on him, and we've seen that start to affect him, is Ezekiel Elliott. Now Ezekiel Elliott, I think it's gotten a little overplayed with how bad people really think he is. Three point eight average on the ground last year, eight hundred seventy six yards, twelve total touchdowns, and those twelve touchdowns. Mostly have come when they're in the red zone, if not all of them were in the red zone last year. I don't believe he's he had any breakaway runs last year. That is one thing that has left his game is he's not explosive. And we saw Tony Pollard really step up in that offense and be the explosive guy. Was one of the best running backs last year despite getting less than 50% of the snaps. Not just touches, but snaps as a running back. So he, he did get booted out because of how good Tony Pollard is. But he's not as bad as people think him to be. Now, I'd actually, now I'm kind of saying this out loud, I think I might move him above Darrell Henderson because uh, we, you know, we've we actually seen him do it. And just two years ago, had about 1,000 yards, 876 yards last year, only 92 yards in the receiving game. So his receiving numbers have dwindled every year since 2018. Uh, at, every year is dwindled by around 100 yards. So... He has loss of effectiveness, certainly in the receiving game, not as sharp as a route runner. But he does offer something that we don't have. We do not have a strong pound it between the tackles runner, especially when you get down to the red zone where we really struggled to run the ball last year. Struggled to run the ball all over the field, but especially in the red zone. This is a guy that you can give it to on the within the five-yard line and feel pretty good about your chances getting it in the end zone, as well as something I talked about earlier, just keeping the defense honest, especially in the red zone. Everybody knows that we're going to be a pass-heavy offense this year, and you need to find some reliability from your running backs. When you get down to the red zone and teams know you're passing, that makes things so rough when the field is so condensed. However, if you have a guy that can just find a way to pound it in the end zone, like we have with, well, we could have with Ezekiel Elliott, I think it'd be, be worth an addition to the team. And finally... This guy's a little bit of a hotter take. You know, there there could, there was a few other guys out there. There was James Robinson. There was potentially bringing back Kenyon Drake. Kenyon Drake probably would have been my sixth uh, a running back if I if I could have added it. Um, former te- former player on the team uh, is very similar to guys that we already have. So I wasn't the biggest fan of that. Uh, and this guy does have one very clear issue, that being Melvin Gordon. Uh, previously of the Denver Broncos. I think he was also a chief last year at some point. Um, let's not ignore the fact that he fumbles the ball a lot. That is why he's gotten to the point where he is in his career, where at one point, I'd go as far to say he was a top five running back. Those first few years with the Chargers, I mean, they were absolutely electric. And then when we saw, oh man, who was that guy we signed from the Bears like the first year under Brian Flores? I forget who that was, but I remember that offseason, Melvin Gordon was also a free agent, and I was livid when I saw he got the pretty much the same exact amount of money as, dang, I can't forget his name. I can't remember his name. But they got like basically the same amount of money, and I'm looking at like Melvin Gordon is one of the elite runners of the football. He just does fumble the ball a lot. That is that is a concern. It's kind of like Jameis Winston. If Jameis Winston could just cut out those interceptions, he is one of the best quarterbacks in the league but he too often gives the ball to the other team. 
and that's what Melvin Gordon does. Uh, that's my top five running backs. If the Miami Dolphins fail to land Dalvin Cook, let me know what you think about the list down below. Let me know what guys you are interested of the Dolphins bringing in if they decide to bring in a running back. Do you think they need to bring in a running back at all? Let me know down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day. Take care, everybody.